Testament kind of night. It's a night of sackcloth and ashes. And those are symbolic of grief and mourning and repentance. Uh, join with me in the bulletin at, after I read this short piece of scripture. And uh, there's a bold type in there. And when we do the greeting, that's your part of the greeting. From 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 18th verse, is what God is doing in us and what God is doing in the people that I'm speaking to tonight. So listen to this. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from degree to degree. And this comes from the Lord, from the Spirit. So basically what the church is about, what the gospel is about, what the Holy Spirit is about, is that you and I are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. The big payoff is not heaven. And the big threat is not hell. But what God is doing is transforming us into the image of his son. And as we are transformed into that image, all the rest of that will take care of itself. So as we come tonight, join me in the greeting. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let's pray. O oh God, maker of everything, and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts, and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you turn to page 340 in your handle and stand as we sing?
trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all of let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thickness. Darkness is like blackness, there is spread upon the mountains, a great power and powerful people. Their like has never been before, nor will be again. After them through the years of all generations, yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding, abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast call, a solemn assembly, gather the people, Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridge groom leave his home, or leave his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, "Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations." Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. That was excellent. Thank you. I'm going to be reading from the Second Corinthians 5.20 through 6.10, New International Version. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I help you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Paul's hardships. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distress, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of God for the people of God.
out of respect for Clara and out of respect for the Word of God, let's bow our heads and fold our hands. Matthew 7, 7 through 28. Ask, and you will be given what you ask for. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. Anyone who seeks, finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. If a child asks his father for a loaf of bread, will he be given a stone instead? If he asks for fish, will he be given a poisonous snake? Of course not. And if you hard-hearted, sinful men know how to give good gifts to your children, won't your Father in heaven even more certainly give good gifts to those who ask him for them? Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the teaching of the laws of Moses in a nutshell. Heaven can be entered only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide enough for all the multitudes who choose its easy way. But the gateway to life is small, and the road is narrow, and only a few ever find it. Beware of false teachers who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are wolves and will tear you apart. You can detect them by the way they act, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit. You need never confuse grapevines with thorn bushes or figs with thistles. Different kinds of fruit trees can easily be determined by examining their fruit. A variety that produces delicious fruit never produces an inedible kind. And a tree producing an inedible fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, the way to identify a tree or a person is by the kind of fruit produced. Not all who sound religious are really good people. They may refer to me as Lord, but still won't get to heaven. For the decisive question is whether they obey my Father in heaven. At the judgment, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we told others about you and used your name to cast out demons and to do many other great miracles. But I will reply, you have never been mine. Go away, for your deeds are evil. All who listen to my instructions and follow them are wise, like a man who builds his house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floods rise and the storm winds beat against his house, it won't collapse, for it is built on rock. But those who hear my instructions and ignore them are foolish, like a man who builds his house on sand. For when the rains and floods come, and the storm winds beat against his house, it will fall with a mighty crash. The crowds were amazed at Jesus' sermons. The word of God for the people of God. I'm going to try to make sure this is on. I think it is. Uh, in my reading during the seminary years, uh, we did a lot of study on the medieval church and even the church in the Dark Ages even. And on up through the 18th century and the 19th century. And uh, one of the things that uh, was really shocking to me was this right here. This, you know, we call it a pulpit. What, you know, but it has a book rest and it's uh, made out of wood or, or, or something like it. And But what their name for it was, it was the sacred desk. Nothing was supposed to be on the sacred desk except the Bible. The people's confessions came through the sacred desk. The pardons were issued 
across the sacred desk. The lessons for the church were read from the sacred desk. And the sermon for the people came from the sacred desk. So, you know, we can call it whatever. I just, you know, it was just a touching thing to remember that this was called the sacred desk. Sacred. A sanctified place for the things of God. Have you ever seen inside one of these? I mean, if you've been in the choir, you probably have. But anyway, I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm too looking at <laughs> it. Set aside for the things of God. Let's see what we got in here. We got some hand sanitizer and a half bottle of water, uh, a paper plate. Uh, somebody's got Tupperware, you know, uh, offering plates, uh, a measuring spoon, <laughs> you have to guess that, uh, candle lighter, golf pencils from someplace, I don't know, that must be Buzz Franklin's, <laughs> a calculator, <laughs> yeah, okay. You got all kinds of things, and I don't know what this is. It looks like a bean bag. Does anybody remember what it is? Okay. Uh, some painter's tape. Lens cleaner for glasses. You got that? Um, a receipt book, a bank bag, a candle from last advent. You got that? Okay. More pens, more candle lighters, grape juice. <laughs> the altar guild. Uh, more pens, more lighters, tape for the calculator, I guess, is what that is. Uh, a stamp doohickey that says pay to the order of the Bank of Dade. So I, I don't know. Judy must be in on this one somehow. Uh, a box full of highlighters. Ev evidently just a doohickey. I don't know what it is. Another bottle of water. Another candle lighter. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> I don't either. Uh, and a little spatula. You got that? And some stuff. Deposit tickets is what that is. A bookmark, notepads, paper clip, an attendance pad, another candle lighter, a microphone, and my tie from Christmas. <laughs> Got that? See if it does it. It usually it's dead. They play this song. Part of an old sermon, a dime. Put that in the offering plate. Uh, a mask. Another part of an old sermon, a calendar. Stuff. Tic Tacs. A Snickers bar. <laughs> Woo! We'll put that right down here. Yeah, uh-huh. The Snickers bar. And finally, that. Oh. Now, I'm not being critical of anything. I'm just saying um, some of that stuff I put in there. Some of that stuff somebody else put in there. Some of that stuff I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. But every once in a while, you need to clean out the sacred desk. You need to do that. Uh, that house that's built on a rock is what transformation is all about. But no matter how well built a house is, or on whatever foundation it's built on. Have you ever seen one that's self-cleaning? 
You can't spend enough money to have a self-cleaning house. You can build the finest house in the world, and every once in a while, you got to go through and get rid of stuff, right? I know uh, we had a, a deck built on the house right before we were retiring, and, uh, and I, I felt so condemned by what Jesus says, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust corrupt. Uh, the guy that was building the deck said, where do you want me to put all the supplies and everything? I said, just dump it in front of the carport. And, and you know, and, and he and I, and so when he started working on it, I said, now you tell me that I'm not biblical, that I'm not a biblical warning. I said, I got $50,000 worth of equipment and machinery sitting out in the rain, and I got $400 worth of junk on my carport. <laughs> you know, it, it, you just have to prioritize. You have to do things. Uh, spring cleaning. The word Lent means spring. And some stuff in my life, whether somebody else put it here, how can somebody else put something there? Well, sometimes people will put useless things like bitterness in you and vengeance and hatred. That stuff needs to go. Sometimes there's stuff I put in Stuff that, I mean, everybody knows that every man needs at least 10 rod and reels, right? I mean, that's... But sometimes in my life, there's stuff that I put in there that, you know, it's not necessarily bad. But it sure does get in the way of me being transformed into the image of Christ. Some stuff just doesn't belong in a life that's being transformed into the image of Christ. What you and I are, we are the place where the Holy Spirit dwells. Sometimes we need to clean it out so the Holy Spirit can live in a cleaner place and a better place. Our sacred space gets cluttered up with stuff that don't belong there. We put some of that stuff in. Other people put some of that stuff in and some stuff we don't know. Maybe the world puts it in. But we do know that some stuff just doesn't belong inside the indwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Those people who are being transformed in the image of Christ. Some stuff doesn't belong in a house founded on the rock. And Lent is a season of getting rid of a lot of stuff that holds us back. Whether we put it there, somebody else put it there, or the world put it there. And as we come today, I would invite you to join with me as we do the invitation for a holy Lent. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day period of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism it was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you now, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and by repentance, by fasting and prayer and self-denial, by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Would you pray with me and thank God? Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth 
Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You would come as the Holy Spirit moves you to receive the sign of the cross, the ashes. Uh, there is a story that I tell when it comes to this. This is one of the most profound services that I as a pastor ever do and have ever done. To look at the people that I love and the people that I shepherd and remind them that from dust they came and to dust they shall return. That's an awesome thing. One time when we were doing this, I invited the fathers in the church to be the one who told the children this and make the sign of the cross on their own child's head. This is serious. This is serious stuff. Because from dust I came and to dust I shall return. And probably it's not going to be as long as it has been. The only hope for me is to repent and believe the gospel. Would you come? You came to dust, you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. And from dust you came to dust, you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. And from dust you came to dust, you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Judy, from dust you came to dust, you shall return. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. The demon from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Betsy, from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Mary, from 
thirsty to you, to those who shall return. Repeat the gospel. So, thirsty to you, to those who shall return. Repeat the gospel. So, dusty came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Even from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Christian, from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Even from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Sharing from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. While in from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Wow. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. And if from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. And from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. You'd join me in page 785 in your hymnal, page 785. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you're justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressions your ways, and sinners will return to you. <clears throat> D- deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is the cross of spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you must not. 
May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance and forgive your sins and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Let us pray. All things come from you, O God, and with praise and thanksgiving we return to you what is yours. You created all that is and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, that we might have abundant and eternal life. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so in gratitude for all that you have done, we offer you ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 If you would get your sheet that you were given as you came in, Judy, are you ready?
can put things in the pulpit, okay? But it's good to see that the rock is back in the place it needs to be. But also, in these next 40 days, there are things in us, they may not necessarily be bad things, or they may even be bad things, but there are things that get in the way. Things that burden us down. Things that keep us from following the Lord with all of our love and all of our heart. It's up to you over these next 40 days to identify what those things are. Not necessarily bad things even. Or maybe. But what are you going to do about it? What wondrous love is this? that caused the Lord of life to lay down his life for my soul. Let's think about loving him back just that much. You go, the grace of God, and in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and observe a holy Lent. Amen. I gotta clean all this mess. <laughs> <laughs>